To some it may seem to be a strange thing what we're doing here tonight. It's unheard of, right, to rehearse someone's death, even the events leading up to their death, and even their final words year after year, decade after decade, century after century. But the strangeness of it goes away as soon as we realize what the meaning of it all is. So tonight I just want to say a few words to put this night in context. I want to really reflect on one simple verse, and this verse is actually not even a complete sentence. Uh, In an incredible economy of words, this verse describes what happened to Jesus and why. The reference is Romans 4.25, and it simply says this, He who was delivered over because of our transgressions and was raised because of our justification. The previous verse identifies who the he is. It is Jesus, our Lord. Jesus is the Lord, our Lord. The word Lord simply means master, In that day, it was often a a way to refer to someone with respect, and so it was often found on the lips of those who feigned respect for Jesus during his life. But the word is really a title that the Jews used as a reference to God. Jesus himself confounded the Pharisees by asking them how David could call his future descendant, who would be the Messiah, Lord. In other words, how could the descendant of David also be God. The Pharisees, of course, had no answer, but the answer stood right in front of them. Jesus, who was and is God, was born of Mary, a descendant of David. And Jesus was God in a body, as some have said. He is the Word who was in the beginning with God and was God. And He became flesh and dwelt among us. Why would God do such a thing? Consider the explanation that Jesus gave to Pilate. Steve read this earlier. Moments before his crucifixion, Jesus said to Pilate, For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. What truth? The Apostle John records 25 times where Jesus would say, Truly, truly, I say to you. One of those times, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Jesus came to bear witness to the truth of who he is, that he is God. He is more than just a man. He came to reveal what what God is like through his words and his actions and his character. Another time Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who practices sin is a slave of sin. Jesus came to bear witness to the truth that we are all sinners enslaved to sin by nature and by choice. And because we have sinned against a holy God, we are due the penalty of that sin, which is death. The Jewish leaders were looking for a Messiah who would conquer what they thought was their greatest enemy, the Roman Empire. They wanted a Christ who would expand their own personal power and authority over people. They wanted a Christ who would make life more comfortable for them. What they didn't realize is God's intention was not to make life more comfortable in this sin-cursed world. God's intention was to destroy an even greater enemy, one far more destructive and far more powerful, sin. The reason the Romans were so odious to the Jews is because they were sinners. And the reason the Jews were so odious to the Romans is because they too were sinners, The reason husbands and wives struggle against each other and against their children is because we are all sinners. The reason the world is filled with suffering is because each one of us is full of selfishness and pride and we've perverted our way before God. 
As Paul said, quoting the Old Testament, no one is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks for God, all have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. The sacrificial system in the Mosaic Law that God created was created to be a constant reminder of the fact that sin is ever-present. It is universal, and the only way to deal with sin is by the shedding of blood. The just punishment for sin is death, and for over a thousand years, God allowed animals to act as a substitute. In fact, the very day Jesus himself was crucified, hundreds of thousands of lambs were being slain in the city as a reminder of sin. But as the author of Hebrews writes, the the blood of bulls and goats can never take away sin. And so that's why they had to be repeated over and over and over again. They can never satisfy the just wrath of God. This cycle of sin seemed unbreakable, even to the point where the messianic expectation of the Jews was not that the Christ would take away the sacrificial system. But Jesus comes along and says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but has passed out of death into life. Unlike all the self-proclaimed messiahs of the past, Jesus did not come proclaiming political or religious freedom. He came to bear witness of the truth that freedom from God's judgment and death is possible. Eternal life can be yours if you would just believe. But how? How is Jesus able to offer forgiveness of sin? How is he able to offer life and circumvent death? Jesus said... Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. And then he said, I lay my life down for the sheep. Jesus does not offer life by circumventing death. Jesus offers life by dying in our place. He was delivered over because of our transgressions. In that same passage where he says that he lays his life down, he also says, I lay my life down so that I may take it up again. No one can take it from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. So when Paul says in Romans 4.25 that he was delivered over for our transgressions, he does not mean that Jesus was helpless and passive. No, Jesus took The initiative. Jesus took the initiative to leave his eternal dwellings and be born as a man. Jesus took the initiative to submit himself to a life of poverty and servitude. Jesus took the initiative to avoid being crowned king as many people wanted to to do to him. Jesus took the initiative to prompt Judas to complete his act of betrayal. Jesus took the initiative to submit himself to the illegal trials and the abusive treatment. Jesus took the initiative to lay his life down for the sheep. But we know it didn't end there. Paul also wrote that Jesus our Lord was risen, was raised because of our justification. Note the preposition because. Jesus was raised not to accomplish our justification, but in light of our justification. Justification is not just the reality that our sins are forgiven and the penalty of death has been paid for. That would simply put us in a state of innocence. But, my friends, God's standard is not innocence. God's standard is holiness. What we need is righteousness. We don't just need our disqualification removed. We need our victory secured. 
Justification means that because of Christ's righteous and sinless life, when we put our faith in Him, God takes all of our sin and places it in Christ's account. And He takes all of Christ's righteousness and He places it in our account. And He treats Christ as if He had lived our life and He treats us as if we had lived His life. God declares us righteous in Christ. Justification means that because of Christ's righteousness, we can have life. And it is the death of Jesus that accomplished our justification. But had Jesus stayed in the grave, there would be no way of knowing if he was a faithful witness. There would be no way of knowing if he had been truthful in everything that he had said and if he'd actually accomplished what he said he would do. So the resurrection is the validation, even the celebration, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one can come to the Father except through Him. With the death of Christ, our penalty was paid for, our righteousness secured, and so death no longer had a claim on Christ. And so God loosed Him from the bonds of death. Jesus also said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. He bids us to come and drink from his everlasting reservoir of life. He offers us his life, a life set free from the power and penalty of sin. A life free to live as he created us to live in joy and peace and life and love. A life full of meaning and significance as we serve Jesus, our Lord. Attending a Good Friday service or Easter Sunday service does no good to improve your standing before God. Trying to be a good person and doing what is right in your own eyes won't do anything for the forgiveness of your sins. The only way to have your verdict change from guilty to righteous is by taking your eyes off of everything you've been placing your trust in to get you into heaven and fixing it solely on Christ. Declaring that He alone can save you. So if you have not done that, believe on Christ who was delivered over for our transgressions and was raised because of our justification. Turn to Christ today and receive His life for yours. Now to those of you who are here and you came believing in Christ and that's why you came, keep believing. Celebrate and live for Him who was delivered over because of our transgressions and was raised because of our justification. Remembering the death of Christ is remembering the the great lengths He went to conquer our sin and secure our justification before God. And inasmuch as it is right and good, as we do on Memorial Day, to remember those who've given their lives to secure the freedom of our country, it is infinitely more right for us to remember the death of Him who secured our eternal life. To God be the glory. Let's pray. Our great God and Heavenly Father, we awe at the reality that though we have sinned against you and were deserving of nothing but punishment, having violated your law, you did the unimaginable. You left your throne in heaven. You sent your son so that we would have life in his name. May it never be true of us that we have forgotten his life and his death on our behalf. May it not be true of anyone here that they are still dead in their sins, save those who have yet to bow the knee to Christ. Help us, Father, to recognize that if we have been paid for by the blood of Christ, 
we have freedom to live for you. Freedom from guilt. Freedom from shame. Freedom to serve you with all the the love and the joy that you have placed into us. May you be glorified on this earth because of what you've done. Amen. Please stand with me for the benediction. From Hebrews 13. Now the God of peace who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord, equip you in every good thing to do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 You are dismissed.